the following is the talk given at the NOC National Novena on Monday the 15th of August 2011. The speaker is Right Reverend Mark P. Hederman and the theme is Faith. The theme for this 2011 Novena at NOC Shrine is Faith providence, and action. I am talking to you about faith. The Feast of Our Lady, which we celebrate today, is all about faith. Christians have believed that Mary was taken into heaven from as early as the third century. According to Roman Catholic doctrine, the Blessed Virgin Mary, having completed the course of her earthly life, was assumed body and soul into heavenly glory. And this was dogmatically and infallibly defined by Pope Pius XII on the 1st of November 1950. So, as Catholics, even if we don't understand exactly how this happens, our Church has declared that Mary, who lived as we do now on this earth about 2,000 years ago, is now fully alive and living with the Blessed Trinity forever in heaven. Not only do we believe this, but as it happened for her, so it will happen for us. We too will be assumed into heaven where we will live with her as bodily creatures caught up in the glorious vision of Almighty God. This is what we mean by our faith. But while Jesus was still talking to the crowd, his mother and brothers stood outside wanting to speak to him. And someone said to him, your mother and your brothers are standing outside waiting to speak to you. He replied, who is my mother? Who are my brothers? And pointing to his disciples all around him, he said, here are my mother and my brothers and my sisters. For whoever does the will of my Father, that is my brother, my sister, and my mother. And we have to apply this text to today's Feast of the Assumption also. What happened to Mary will happen for us. When we die, we will also be assumed into heaven. This is the meaning of the Incarnation. This is why Jesus Christ came on earth, so that no one of us should be lost. Of course, we glory in the Virgin Mary. And of course, we pray to her to help us in all our trials. But this must not lead us to underestimate our own situation, our own personal relationship with God. God loves each one of us by name, first person singular. 
and we do not have to pass through any intermediary, any structure to establish that personal contact. You have to imagine the angel appearing to you and saying, Hail, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you. We don't have to go anywhere or meet anyone else. We are being saluted by the angel every moment of our lives in whatever situation we find ourselves in or wherever we happen to be. Everything we say and we believe about Our Lady, the Mother of God, on this feast of her assumption into heaven applies to us also. And the important reality about Knock is that Our Lady appeared to ordinary people living in this area. It was direct communication to her people. There were no institutional functionaries, no official church intervention, no hierarchical permission. This was direct contact with the people of God. And such must be the case in Ireland today. Although many of us are reeling from recent revelations about clerical crime, hierarchical cover-up, institutional corruption, none of these things should affect our faith in God. The lines of communication between God and the people of Ireland have never been stronger or more direct. And this direct communion with God is what we celebrate above all in this national shrine. And the numbers of people attending this annual novena is living proof of this connection. And although we are aware that the centenary of the birth of Monsignor Horan, this is a historical date of another order. He was a servant of this shrine and it was his great privilege to have been so. And as our Lord Jesus Christ has said, suppose one of you has a servant plowing or looking after the sheep. Will you say to that servant when he comes in from the field, come now and sit down to eat? You will rather say, prepare my supper and get yourself ready to wait on me. Will you thank the servant because he or she did what they were told to do? So you also, when you have done everything you were told to do, should say, we are unworthy servants, we have only done our duty. So it is for all those who are guardians of this shrine. There is no hierarchy in this place. No one here is greater than any other. Each one of us is directly in contact with God and with our mother, Mary. 
archbishops, bishops, monsignori, and even abbots can all have their own agenda. Our Lady appeared in Nock on the 21st of August, 1879, to a group of 15 people, men, women, and children. Now take note of the date. Word of her appearance spread quickly through Ireland, although it was not the days of radio and television. Glenstall Abbey, where I come from, is in the diocese of Cashel and Emley. The archbishop there, at the time of Our Lady's appearance, was Dr. Thomas Croke, after whom Croke Park was named, as he was the first patron of the GAA. He became Archbishop of Cashel in 1875. He set about refurbishing the cathedral in Thurles, and just two months before the apparition in Nock, on Sunday the 22nd of June 1879, he presided over a most impressive ceremony in Thurles Cathedral, County Tipperary, where he consecrated the newly refurbished cathedral in front of 40,000 people. At the end of August 1879, he wrote to one of his fellow bishops about Our Lady's apparition in Nock. Wasn't it great, he said, that Our Lady did not appear in Nock on the 21st of June? Otherwise, I would have had no one at all at the consecration of my cathedral. So you see that it is possible for members of the hierarchy to have their own plans and their own priorities, and these can be interfered with by direct communication of God with his people. Monsignor James Horan did an excellent job but the important thing in this centenary year of his birth is to forget about him and concentrate on the mystery of the shrine which he tended. The reason why Our Lady went directly to heaven at the end of her earthly life is also because every single thing she did every breath she breathed, every action she performed on this earth was 100% as God would have wished it to be. She could stand over all her deeds as the most perfect performance of the will of God the Father. And that is what we must ask her to help us with today. That our lives from this day onward will be as perfect a carrying out of the will of God as we can manage. So this feast day is really all about you. You should not leave this holy place until you have understood that God wants to count you among his intimate friends. Your faith is this, to believe that God loves you personally that he wants your love in return, that he intends to take you to be with him forever and ever in heaven. Ask Our Lady to help you 
not to leave this place until you have really believed that this is true, until your faith is so strong that you know that this is true, then your visit to Nock Shrine will have been worthwhile and it will change your life forever. Thank you.